Liberal Viewer presents. So with all the misinformation they put out, you'd think our friends at Fox would be used to criticism by now, but watching Fox News lately, it seems they are so sensitive to being factually corrected that they've actually run several stories recently trying to find something illegal about pointing out Fox News' errors, as you can see, for example, in Steve Ducey's introduction for a segment last week in this clip. Left-wing attacks being supported by your tax dollars? That's right. The organization, Media Matters, is reportedly claiming a tax-exempt status Status, subsidizing their agenda and their war on Fox News. So why is the IRS and the federal government letting them get away with it? Now, claiming that tax dollars subsidize private nonprofit organizations is at least a little bit of a stretch, and I don't recall Fox News ever saying that tax dollars subsidize churches, which are also tax exempt, but the really ridiculous argument against Media Matters didn't come until Fox News brought on lawyer Jordan Seculo, who directs operations at the American Center for Law and Justice, a very partisan, conservative, tax-exempt nonprofit, who nevertheless said this about Media Matters. It's partisan, and you cannot be a wing of the Democrat Party and get 501c3 status. The, the terminology that they're using, their founder and their directors are using, is very dangerous if you're trying to keep your tax-exempt status, saying that Fox News has now taken over the Republican Party and that they've declared a guerrilla war on Fox News right. means that they are a purely partisan organization. That doesn't qualify under the 51c3 status. Hmm, no, there are a couple big problems with that argument, problems which, of course, Fox News anchor Steve Ducey never raised. But before getting to the problems with the message, there's also a big problem with this messenger, Jordan Seculo, is the one making the argument because... The organization he directs is also a 501c3 nonprofit with tax exempt status, yet Seculo exhibits exactly the kind of partisan bias he attributed to Media Matters, and even worse, a video edited and uploaded by Right Wing Watch showed Seculo earlier this year at the Faith and Freedom Coalition Summit saying this. I'm a pretty partisan guy, as you know, so we should be honest. If we actually want to beat this administration, which has been the most aggressive on these issues, we still have to vote Republican. We still have to unite. We know where there's a lot of us in the Tea Party. We know there's a lot of people in the Tea Party who aren't Christian too. We all have to come together. And maybe down the road we can come up with you know these third party ideas. It's not gonna happen this time likely. Yeah. We're running out of time. So let's get ready to unite whoever the GOP nominates and, and stop this administration. And now what's particularly bad about Jordan Seculo telling people to vote for the Republican nominee in the 2012 election as the director of a tax-exempt 501c3 organization is that if you actually look at section 501c3 of the federal law, you'll see what these tax-exempt organizations can't do under the law is participate in or intervene in any political campaign on behalf of or in opposition to any candidate for public office which is different from Media Matters criticizing Fox News for being a partisan group aligned with a political party, though on that front, what may be the more ironic part of Jordan Seculo's statement to the Faith and Freedom Coalition was the part where he said, We took the Republican Party, made it ours. I mean, we can be honest about it. Now, it's pretty ironic to hear Jordan Seculo talking about taking over the Republican Party when, remember, his accusation against that other 501c3 was... It's partisan, and you cannot be a wing of the Democrat Party and get 501c3 status. The, the terminology that they're using, their founder and their directors are using, is very dangerous if you're trying to keep your tax-exempt status. Saying that Fox News has now taken over the Republican Party and that they've declared a guerrilla war on Fox News right. means that they are a purely partisan organization. That doesn't qualify under the 51c3 status. <laughs> now, again, I already showed that argument doesn't fit the real prohibition in Section 501c3 against working on behalf of a candidate's campaign, but what's really interesting is that one necessary logical step in that bogus 501c3 accusation is just assuming that Fox News is totally aligned with the Republican Party, an assumption to which the Fox News anchor never raised any objection, and even more ironically, if that's true that Fox News controls or is controlled by the Republican Party, then Fox News has its own problem with a different set of federal laws that exempt media expenditures that benefit a political candidate from federal election law regulations unless that media organization is, quote, 
owned or controlled by any political party, political committee, or candidate, unquote. So if Fox News is controlled by the Republican Party, all its favorable coverage of Republicans would be considered a corporate expenditure subject to federal election regulations, and a lot of Fox News broadcasting could then be regulated as such expenditures because... Even earlier that morning, Fox and Friends covered Representative Michelle Bachman's announcement that she's running for president with complete positive spin over the title Republicans Rising Star you can see in this clip. She's somebody who is very comfortable in front of audiences and like Herman Cain, uh, doesn't really read her speeches verbatim and when she does, they're not on a teleprompter. How do I know that? Well, if you look at Congressman Bachman yesterday, she let everyone know that if she gets to the White House, she'll have a new approach to the speech biz, speech giving business. President Bachman may be retiring that thing, by the way, when I get to the White House. We may not have that. A teleprompter in chief. Uh, now, when the brown haired guy who's not Steve Ducey claimed there that Michelle Bachman doesn't read her speeches verbatim, or when she does, there's no teleprompter, he's just not telling the truth, which is evident just from that incident this year when Michelle Bachman gave the Tea Party response to President Obama's State of the Union address, which some networks broadcast from a camera showing Bachman looking off to the side the whole time, and the Tea Party's defense of her was that there was another camera and that, quote, according to Tea Party HD, Bachman was looking directly into a teleprompter and camera, unquote. So that Fox News coverage of presidential candidate Michelle Bachman was closer to a campaign expenditure than news, and Bachman isn't even a Fox News contributor like so many other potential and actual Republican presidential candidates. So much so that Media Matters did a study last January showing that Fox News' 2010 expenditures on airtime for potential Republican presidential candidates serving as Fox News hosts and contributors ranged into the millions of dollars in free advertising per candidate, including current actual candidates Newt Gingrich and Rick Santorum, and it's that kind of factual educational material from Media Matters that does nothing to violate its tax-exempt status, but... I think better explains why Fox News has been so keen on trying to find ways to discredit media matters, but I want to know what you think. Has recent Fox News coverage of supposed problems with media matters tax-exempt status been more about the facts or more about Fox News's displeasure with media matters effectiveness at pointing out Fox News bias? And regarding whose partisanship more likely has legal consequences? Is Media Matters' critique of Fox News more likely to violate the law prohibiting tax-exempt groups from working on behalf of a candidate's campaign, or is the amount of control the Republican Party has on Fox News more likely to disqualify Fox News from the media exception to federal election expenditure regulations? I, YouTube, you decide.